Welcome to the Creator to Creator podcast where I talk to other creatives about their journey and experiences. For this episode, I had the opportunity to sit down with Ralph Latif, the international makeup pro for Dior. We talk about how he got started in the makeup industry, setting trends, and keeping true to your identity as an artist. And we are live. <laughs> Thank you hey. for doing this. Thanks, Hitesh, for having me. Of course. We've, uh, I think before we start, I want to give people a bit of perspective on how we met. Mm-hmm. I think that was a very interesting thing that happened. Uh, this was, what, a year ago? A little more than a year ago? More than a year. What time two years. Yes. Yeah. When like, was uh, the Dior Stars event? It was not last year, not last Feb, but the Feb 2019. 2019. Feb. 19. Yes. Oh my God. It was in the Bourg in DC. Yes. So that was the first time I met Ralph, and this was back when I was still working at Dior as an intern for them. And you had flown in from Lebanon, I believe, at that point. Yes. And you were here to do the event. As soon as we met the same day, we had a brilliant conversation, I think until almost six in the morning. And then and straight, straight after <laughs> to the airport. You went straight to the airport after that. I think like those are the moments I always love when I meet new people, like having those conversations and understanding different culture, different perspectives on certain views or whatever they are, especially as artists, because every artist is unique in your own way and that's always like fascinated me more than anything else regardless of if that industry is something i can do or not like you do makeup you're a makeup international makeup artist for dior now i know very little about makeup but it still fascinates me when you're talking about why you do certain things why you choose the brushes you choose or the shades you choose or the looks you're going for and things like that and I remember us talking about it last week, uh, how you got started. Mm. And I think that'd be a very interesting conversation to record. And like, I wanted to get more of that from you. So you have an architectural background. I started actually studying uh, interior architecture, uh-huh. like for one year. And I, uh, like, in the middle of the year, I felt that this is something that I can't do. And uh, yes, I do have the artistic side. Mm. But I I can't commit uh, to these type of projects, and I can't really focus on this type of mm. uh, architecture projects and things like that. So uh, I had a conversation at the university with one of my teachers, and uh, he advises me to move to fine art, to painting and sculpture, where I can express myself in colors, mm. and um, that needs a bit less uh, work. When it comes to projects and uh, the time frame, yeah, the time frame. Because back in time, I used to also work while mm. studying, so it was tough for me to uh, to deal with this Both these projects, of architecture, interior. So I studied painting and sculpture, mm. and um, going back to makeup, I used to love makeup, and I used to watch my mom doing her makeup, and I was always fascinated mm. watching like. Uh, women doing their makeup or uh, even watching TV. I used to look at the makeup of the actresses and things like that. But uh, in my culture and in Lebanon, like makeup was not like a career that you can, like people don't perceive makeup as a career. So Mm. I was always putting it on a side, like something that I can do, but I can't do it as a career. So uh, during the painting and sculpture, time when I was at the university, I met people doing theater and uh, working with one of the Lebanese directors for a um, series. So uh, I started working with them as a comparse, like after school. And, uh, and I met one of the big names in Lebanon, Violet Hanin, called, she, she's, uh, um, she teach makeup, artistic makeup in mm-hmm. Alba. Mm. So um, she really helped me to um, to accept the fact that yes, I have I do have skills in makeup, and I have to really invest in this part, artistic part, part in my career. 
So I started looking at makeup in a, from a dis- different perspective. Okay. And then by chance, I was like with a friend in the car who uh, has some makeup brochures at the back of the car. So I took one of the brochures and I asked him, why uh, this yeah. brochure is with you here? And it's a your brochure. So um, uh, he, he has a printing company in Lebanon. So he said, like, I print all the brochures and everything for 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 Dior in Lebanon so I mm-hmm. took one of the brochures I called the, the second day mm-hmm. they used to do uh, makeup school in Beirut and Clemenceau so they told me that they already started two weeks ago but you can come and join the, the team and then after we had the, the Israel war in Lebanon the 2006 mm-hmm. so I used to go to Hamra on a daily basis for six months and uh, it was really tough. I, I used to have no car, so but I, I think back in time I, I set uh, a goal for yourself. The goal for myself mm-hmm. that this is what I wanted to do, and this is what I really want to put my energy and invest all the artistic side in my personality and my Thank artistic you. skills and mm-hmm. to to do makeup. So right after the this uh, certificate was Dior. I was uh, recruited by Dior okay. for Lebanon to work sure. as a makeup artist. Mm. And then I had no experience. Huh? I used to do like just few freelance uh, work with some local magazines, but I started working with Dior. It was a great school to to understand uh, the to details. understand the details. The technique the technical part and also the inspiration behind makeup that's how it's done at the highest level mm, especially that at Dior you know it's a couture brand that mm. when you look at makeup from a couture point of view it's completely different than you look at it from and the color daily. and texture yeah. so it's, it's an element in, in fashion that is really if you look at it throughout the dec- decades and years how it evolved with with time with fashion with mm. history so to start understanding the importance mm. of knowing makeup and doing makeup and how different is it would you colors. say in terms of sorry to cut you off but like how different is it or what are the aspects of it that are different in a couture mm. makeup suit like you're saying to a person using it on a daily basis to get ready go out or something mm. like that or what are the big differences there uh you know in makeup there is so many uh style of makeup or uh, or different type of makeup you have the beauty makeup you have a catwalk makeup you have fashion makeup editorial you have also a be- uh, artistic makeup so the fashion makeup is born in the atelier where they create the dress and it's a it's something that complete that cut and outfit and mm. dress and uh, tailleur or something so it is something that really the inspiration is coming from the atelier, from the couture. Okay. When we talk about beauty makeup, the inspiration is coming about the woman itself, about mm-hmm. her personality, about uh, the way, the colors that she likes, the, uh, the her lifestyle, uh, her culture, everything that is related to women. Fashion, uh, uh, artistic makeup is is a. Uh, is is born in a, in a in an artistic piece. It's a inspiration is a concept. Inspiration yeah. is everywhere. You can look at a chair and see it Has translated into beauty and makeup okay. from the lines as a graf- graphic makeup, from the color, from the sharpness, from the texture, material. So these are more also, I think, the art movements that happen throughout the history. There's inspirations from those sometimes. Whatever, like whether it was the Renaissance or the post Renaissance. Uh, different artists at that generation set a standard of what art was mm. and in some ways it was also translated into other uh, fields as well but that you're saying is more editorial and artistic makeup side right yeah like for example i'll give you an example throughout the history of makeup if you go back to like every decade and every like time you, you had influences and you mm. had something happening that make beauty evolve and change like nowadays you have all the influencers the technology the influencers the uh, the social media people are connecting the video tutorials so and brands are open like 
you, you have access. Yeah. So people have access to everything. So this is why is this is what yeah, yeah information are available for everyone and everywhere. So this is why you can't uh, setting trends nowadays is really hard. Mm. Before, like going back to the eighties. It was all about, if you go back to the 80s, the pop stars, Madonna, Michael Jackson, the, mm. the fashion was like more is less, the, uh, the colors, the even the shape of the dresses, everything was big. Mm. So makeup also was all about colors going out, out of, mm. of normal. Going back to the 50s, Hollywood stars. So um, very elegant, very feminine, very defined, the liner. 70s, the hippies, latest the 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 movement that happened, the mo- movement that happened in Europe and everything so you you see that makeup is becoming is be is be, uh, be, became like part of the culture part of the culture and also it reflect what's happening in the society yeah. like men and women can wear wear, wear makeup in the 70s mm. body paint the tattoos the, uh, the accessories everything so you you always feel that there's something happening in the world and makeup is influenced but by, by this it's also influencing also it's getting influenced from like you said the pop culture and everything else are happening but it's makeup is also influencing the generation that's growing up in that particular period mm. the late the women uh, the men that are in that industry whether they are professionals in the industry or it's an everyday person using makeup mm. they are also being influenced by what are the movements globally go- happening like you mentioned uh, during the 50s how the hollywood uh, took over the the look in a lot of ways and what is something like that today that you see though like i, I understand Did when you said that it's it's hard to set a trend in a lot of ways for a long period now i think there are much shorter uh, trends in a mm, lot of ways sh- shorter and also you have you have lots of people that you have the the couture and the fashion that mm-hmm. are trendsetter. You have also the um, the cultures that are exposed. Like you have lots of exposure for culture mm-hmm. everywhere. So people love to try like American mm-hmm. style of makeup or Indian style or uh, European style. Or so they're exposed. So they like to try something new. Mm-hmm. Also, you have plenty of influencers but artists that are exposed and artists express an influence so you mm-hmm. you take that inspiration and you try to do it your way so it's always like today you are a trendsetter yourself so it's not about being influenced mm-hmm. you can yourself set a trend you just have to look around you get the inspiration and then do what you feel that you want to do From everything it's more and... about like individual it's more yeah. about personalized approach to, yeah, to so... beauty in a lot of ways, it, it defines uh, you because it's your experiences that you're going through in your life. Mm, mm. And you, like we were having a conversation just before we started, was how when, uh, for people who don't know, you're from Lebanon and recently the bomb mm. blast that happened in Lebanon and how that was affecting you and how you wanted to express yourself through mm. that and how you did that. Mm. That was something very important to you. So I want to get into that a little more and what that, what was the scenario like in Lebanon when that happened? What were you feeling? Your house was affected, your house was almost completely destroyed. Mm. Uh, and what was that like? You know, like everyone, ev- everyone in life express in, in, in a way. So artists usually express throughout their art pieces. Mm. And, um, I do express more during my dark days than when I'm mm. in, a, in a good state of mind because my emotions are really touched and I feel like I have to get out all this negative would feelings. You, so this is say, why it's, Would you say that during those times the emotions are more on the surface? Because you, you are stimulated somehow mm. or, or uh, you have emotions that you don't use on a daily basis. Exactly. And then in, in a sudden you feel yourself that emotionally you're really using your emotions and you're, I can't find the word, but I mean, it, it's really strong. Strong. So yeah. uh, you feel that you want to 
express you have to get it out Family. that's it you want yeah. to get out all this and uh, you start like doing whatever doing, your art form is yeah and then when, when you start you start also looking around you and getting inspired how you can express your feelings mm-hmm. with them how you can share that message how you can uh, help people to see the other side because mm-hmm. also you need a message always yeah. you express yourself yes but you need to deliver a message to uh, to be positive somehow in, in your message even if it's a dark message but still you still need to see and and the project that we we tried to Just this one to do yes it was actually a makeup uh, look that ex- was expressing beirut telling about beirut how it is cracked Mm. and uh, dark from a side but from the other side you still see light, light and hope and uh, you explained and it brilliantly to me uh, before like you were saying how when these are cracks that happen mm. yeah, whether it's you as a person or as a society or as a culture when you have these massive events that affect so many lives it takes time to heal from mm. those especially the skin that represent yeah. the base You present your uh, everything start with the base and the skin and makeup is the base mm. so when it when it's cracked it's something to to make it heal it takes time and it takes and it needs treatment and it needs a, a, a life circle like the the, the circle of life like regeneration, for the skin regeneration mm. rejuvenation so it's it's hard for the skin to heal and mm. uh, so it was a, a great way to put that feeling into In a message, a, a message of makeup yeah. but at the same time we wanted to keep hope even mm. if we're, we're really feeling empty or hopeless but there is still some light coming from the other side that you don't see crack mm. maybe it's cracked yes but you don't see if it's cracked or not mm. so you keeping that the, the, optimism the, yeah optimism and also people can see it the way they want to they want to perceive it sure i definitely want to come back to more of makeup but i want to talk a little more about how because we all saw what was in the media Mm. but i think there is a different perception that comes through media there is a reality of it for sure but how was the experience on the ground what was the daily scenario Mm. when that was happening because i kept seeing your stories and i kept feeling so emotional about it and it was like what world are we living in now mm. that it's 2020 and this is still happening it's horrible actually what we lived and what we experienced was was something that for me i was born in the 80s and i lived the war uh, but that was completely this was completely different we experienced mm. something that we never felt or we we saw something we were seeing something that we've never seen in, in, in our entire life and when you live in your city and in your country and you love it and and you have memories in everywhere in the city and you look around you you see the people you see people and you see the places and you see it it, it is it is hard to yeah. to accept it's it's just accept we we can't accept And like in 2020, we can't accept things like that to happen again. Yeah. And how much of it is, because from what I understood of it at least, is that there was a lot of the cause was because of human negligence. Mm-hmm. And that there was already so much of that at the port and it was not taken care of. They could mm-hmm. have taken care of it before. But no, I prefer not to talk about this part. Yeah. Because there is a big yeah, Huge, thing. Yeah. 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 But that's true. But I mean, we all know that this is something that should but how, have never how, happened. How, as a community, at least, was it positive? Be, uh, the one thing I was at least happy to see was that everybody was supporting each other. That that was that was yeah. uh, that that's it. I mean, if you look the, the the day after the explosion, how people gathered, like young children, old people gathered all together to clean and to help each other. That was. 
the blood donation. That was the yeah. best message even to all these bad things that happened. Yeah, even across the world, so many people mm. came to support in their own way. Mm. Like I have friends here who are music producers that they were making, like almost everyone tried to do their part in some way. Like mm. they were releasing certain products or like all the product profits go to Lebanon and mm. things like that. And that's the beautiful aspect of the community mm. element that when something such a tough period is going, Mm. Everybody comes together. Mm. It's the same way, I believe, in a lot of ways. Like, I was, I don't remember a lot of it when the 9 11 happened, but that's what I hear when people talk mm. about it now. It's like New York, when that happened, it was like everybody came together to help each other. I mean, definitely, it's, a, it's something that uh, the minimum people can do, like support each other. But in Lebanon specifically, because uh, we've been through a lot of things that happened in this country and still like people are it's a process uh, the most positive people in the world the yeah. most creative people in the but world yourself, uh, i mean I, i'm so proud of being lebanese and i'm yeah. so proud also of all the the people that they're they're fighting and they're fi- they fight for their country and they they deliver their art and they have a message to give to the world and a voice so hoping that one day we uh, we get back our beautiful beirut mm. with, without the cracks without the cracks and the regeneration process once it's complete and i'm i'm, I'm hopeful too and i i when i see those like the things we just mentioned that's what makes me see the optimistic side of things that there is hope mm. There is a lot of good things that are coming. Uh, yeah, the event itself was a very negative event, but through that, a lot of good things have come. And I think if people stay on the course, there can be a lot of good that comes from it in the future. Inshallah. Right. <laughs> uh, going back to makeup. So you, uh, once you started off doing makeup for Dior, now you travel internationally doing makeup mm. for across the GCC and almost all, how many countries do you do now? In our region, uh, when I moved to Dubai in 2012 to join the regional team, uh, the te- the region is uh, covered Africa, India, Indian Ocean, GCC and Middle East. So we have more than 28 countries, but I do travel. Uh, I do, me and my colleague, we're two, like right. covering the, the region. Another Emilia. amazing human <laughs> being. <laughs> so I do 14 countries and mm. she does also like almost uh, 13, 14 countries. That's amazing. And how, how, what inspirations, like what's your favorite part about doing makeup in terms of which part do you enjoy the most? You mentioned different types of makeup. You mentioned editorial, beauty, all of these different ones. So which is your favorite to do? As an, from an artist point of view, from an art, artist per, perspective, always the, the editorials are the best mm-hmm. place to express your art and yourself. Mm-hmm. Because in the editorials, yes, you have a mood board, but you still have some free, freedom. Uh, freedom and freestyle gestures that you can mm-hmm. do. And you can also use your own technique and you can uh, use uh, mix your products uh, it's different than retail and then uh, beauty makeup when you're dealing with clients and you're selling products. Mm. So definitely from an artist's perspective, uh, behind a lens or like backstage is, is a great uh, way to express yeah. your, 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 the way you see makeup and especially artistic makeup. Backstage is something, the experience itself, being backstage working with was almost 30 makeup artists, Peter Phillips, the head of creative director and, and image director for makeup. There's something that really motivates you and yeah. gives you that uh, push. And, uh, and you feel like proud of yourself being there in Paris yeah. in the fashion week. So it really, it's push really something. It, uh, yeah. it gives you inspiration, motivation and also, in a lot yeah, of ways. Yeah, you're more well. confident. You yeah. come back, you're confident. You. Yeah. I, I was, I have one interesting story on that. Like I was very fortunate to meet Peter Philip when I was working with Dior and mm. they had a, the Dubai fashion show that happened, I think 19 as well. So he was doing some press release and I was doing some pictures for the PR team. And when 
between the interviews and everything i got like a few conversations happened with him and i was asking him like what's usually your inspiration to make certain products and mm. how do you choose the colors because he mm. always the way he uh, i'm paraphrasing everything obviously but like the way he answered was uh, they have the personality whether it's Charlie Saron Natalie Portman whoever that is and then he chooses what color defines that person and then he makes that for you in beauty it is really for me the most important part in beauty is when you meet women and have this conversation before you start the makeup to try to understand a bit about her uh, personality about her style lifestyle um the reason why she used makeup because mm. so this will help you as a makeup artist to guide that person the, the woman women to 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 get to the point where she can use makeup to deliver the mat- message that she wants to deliver especially in our region here <coughs> like in GCC Middle East in general makeup is a big thing it is a big thing yeah every they like makeup a yeah. lot Every woman here when you see them where outside whether in the mall or wherever they every nobody leaves the house without like it's some way whether it's a minimal makeup or they want to do a bit uh, their version of it Let, let's not call different words but like their version of it however they want to keep uh, the makeup and that it's not a common thing like it is Europe, not uh, it's very different but it is important to respect people's culture and yeah. the way they they like to do do which was very fascinating to me when i first moved usually here. like europeans they do more way less than yeah. than the middle eastern or the gcc countries they they do makeup but this is this doesn't mean that this is correct no this is not right or so wrong it's different the culture here and the way um, people there is reasons and i'll tell you why i always say it like people ha- here they have challenges with their skin tone and undertone mm-hmm. this is why it started like the, the full cover found foundation is something big because they they like to hide these imperfections they're not comfortable with their skin mm-hmm. so and also wearing a hijab is oh, hair is a very important element when it comes to femininity mm-hmm. so how covering yourself this is why you, you invest you put more uh, uh, you put more energy into energy it. or uh, you put more in, in, in the makeup using more eyeliner strong so so you like you're replacing yeah, the hair the or, yeah the, the lipstick is strong yeah, yeah because they they don't have the chance to do their hair or to show mm. their accessories they're in abaya so yeah. this is the only part where they can really express themselves that's very so, interesting well, But it's a very similar the other place in the world where I see uh, makeup being a big influence is Japan. Mm. Uh, certain other also Asian cultures they they are pretty big on makeup but that's again like completely different because Asians are really strong in skincare. Like mm. the skincare was bo- was born in Asia. Mm. And all the uh, makeup products that are uh, that have skincare based or like skincare and makeup hybrids are coming from Asia. This is why they're very strong in skin products okay. and cushion and foundation and brows because also they have the challenge because they don't have strong and defined brows. Mm-hmm. This is why you, you see that all the great products for brows are coming from Asia because they have to create something good yeah. for their for their the necessity for their necessity. It's, yeah, uh, it's the not just the demand but it's almost like like European they don't need because they have like a very light skin pink cheeks naturally mm. they have they don't need to and their lifestyle is different mm. here women most of the gcc uh, or emirati women or saudi they don't work they have yeah. plenty of time in the morning to take care of themselves and do their skincare routine and apply makeup yeah in europe like it's different like, like it's a different they just lifestyle. have five minutes in the morning yeah. they do it in the metro they go to work it's it's a completely yeah. different lifestyle and when you look at the makeup from this perspective like look at the culture the lifestyle you understand why people why, why trends here are different than mm-hmm. trends in in europe or trends in the states or trends in the that was Asia. another one of my just off topic a bit here uh, but uh, because the part of the company we worked for 
was the fragrance makeup and skin care mm. not the couture mm. we had like you collaborated a lot with them mm. me much lesser uh, mm. when we did but for me learning about fragrance was one of the most interesting thing as well mm. like how certain parts of the world have different fragrances that they are attracted to the ones that work better there how uh middle east there's more wood leather wood mm. whereas if you went to more like the asian uh, part of the world that be more flowers mm. light flowers uh in different parts of the world fruity uh, perfumes in uh, central america and things like that like it was so interesting to learn those things and uh, that always was like there's so much to learn when it comes to these uh, within these niches you can call it whatever it is a niche or not it's a huge industry it's not a niche but at the same time there's so much history and so much information within them like it's an entire world of its own talking about perfume i mean uh, perfume is is an extension of Continue. course yeah of course it's an extension of uh, uh, of the dress and of beauty and also it is um a way of expressing culture mm. this is why uh, and when we say culture we look at the culture from from all perspective weather is included as well uh, mm. the way you dress summer winter uh, yeah you have more summer uh, also you the way you dress uh, the traditions like mm. here if if you see how the Emirati or the GCC people they they perfume themselves because it's a ritual mm. they do it with they used to do it with the oud and bakhur and everything so it's it's part of their culture yeah so um and this is why when they create perfume they create for people at the yeah. end for so you have to understand the market mm. and you have to understand what is comfortable nowadays because when you wear a fragrance it's like you're wearing a shirt or a dress So you need to be comfortable with it. You need mm-hmm. to uh, feel good in it. So, what's your favorite perfume that you normally use the most? Since two thousand seven. Since two thousand seven, really? Which yeah. one is this? Now I'm, I'm now I'm. Interested. I do change. I layer, but Jerome Intense is my mm. signature. I use it since two thousand and seven, since the launch. Yeah, I I see you as the personality of Jerome. That was another. It's not about the personality. I think. I feel comfortable wearing it mm. and I feel confident and sexy and handsome wearing it. So also I feel that it's an attractive smell for me. Mm. So that's how you want to have it. That's that's, uh, the, that's how it made me feel comfortable feels. most. So that's yeah. it. That's nice. That's that's always one of the like cuz before that I did not have uh working in the interior design world. I did a bunch of other industries which was first offices then i would did residentials then i remember in college my biggest uh, my one of my teachers who was huge influence on me as designer and in a lot of ways the person i am now she was the biggest influence for me because before that i don't remember anybody as a teacher in my school making an impact on me to be honest which is a shame uh which i think as educational system that's can be considered as a failure mm. i'm going to be open to say it I, i don't mind saying it i think it's almost a failure because you are not equipping the next generation mm. with a mindset that they can go into the world and be successful at whatever they want to be successful at mm. the system's old broken whatever mm. it is i don't have the answers mm. that's why i don't want to criticize too much but i know it's it's now working because mm. if you see for example in us uh, students coming out of college or whatever schools with hundreds and th- sometimes 100000 dollars of debt mm. at age of 20 21 like how is that person supposed to first of all is he going to get a job if he gets a job how much is his first salary going to be is he mm. going to be able to pay off any of those debts with managing his we were expenses talking about this actually a few days ago about uh, people at the age of like 20 or 18 they're not able to decide this is mm. why they all end up like doing something that and then after when they 
graduate and then they they don't work in their industry that they study yeah i mean they they end up doing something else so this is why it is important i think uh, when it comes to makeup or art Mm -hmm. to give more people the opportunity to expand understand and 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 learn about these mm, different avenues. Different because you mentioned uh, chapters like in, the beginning, in terms of beauty. Yeah, because you mentioned in the beginning, like in Lebanon, which is the same in India as well. Mm. Like these industries would not be considered as a profession. Yeah, as as, as a career down. or something yeah. that yeah. So this is why I think they have to invest more, like especially in art schools. And because you know how, how much people care about beauty now and yeah. themselves. So it should be like something a major it's a university or something that giving more attention to it, mm. not just like doing certificate or like few. Mm. But what, what would you say as someone who's been in the industry for so long and now works with a major, uh, one of the best brands you can ask for in luxury, like with such a rich heritage mm. as Dior has with your experience that you've done if someone at whether they're 18 or younger wants to pursue in this industry what are the best maybe tips you can give them mm. or what are the best experiences that you've had maybe you had to do some trial and error process mm. to figure out which you would have been like if someone had told me this earlier mm. I would have saved so much time I mean you have to do it you have to take the path. Level of you have to take the yeah. path, and there's always failures and success and everything. But when you set a goal, mm. I mean, you set a destination, at least a destination. You don't have to set the direction. Mm. You can take different directions, but when you when you know what destination you're going to, so setting a goal is important, and then after focusing on that goal mm. and uh, practicing, Practice. practicing, put in the work. And, practicing and not copying Mm -hmm. it is important to look on social media and uh, do tutorials uh, watch tutorials on youtube and everything but practice makes you as a person deliver that inspiration the way you can do it Mm -hmm. so it is important to uh, keep your identity in the way you work and the way you you see it, but do it your way. You don't yeah. have to do it the same. Same way. And I and I'm always like when I look at people doing the same makeup and trying to do the same highlighter here. But I mean, try to do it the different, different way. You yeah. don't have to. I mean, if you want to stand out yeah, as you, an artist, you have to. I mean, mm. have an identity. Practice. Keep focusing. Learning every day. Never accepting uh, commands and. Uh, criticism on internet or so on your personal life uh, uh, otherwise you you won't uh, get there who was your who would you go to for criticism when you first started off would it be if, did you try to do makeup on your mother or who would you get your criticism from friends friends you know at the beginning i had lots of friends who supported me and you know like girls they, they they always like to, mm, to get the makeup done to, to get the makeup <laughs> done for no reason even. but uh, they they and especially friends because they can tell you if it's nice no do it this way I like it this way so it's not like someone that intimidated to tell you the truth mm. or something so friends are important to to give you uh, who are not uh, afraid of opinion. telling you yeah I mean they can tell you this is good this is not yeah. try to do it this way family yes i mean and also like now i learned from everyone even the beauty consultants that they work at the counter sometimes they do things like i learned the technique mm-hmm. from them because always there is your yeah. personal way that yeah. in makeup you can't set like a technique that this is the way you do it there's always personal isn't that tips. pretty standard for any art form there's mm-hmm. no perfect or right way to no, do it. No, I mean, when it comes to art, there's no yes or no correct yeah. or, or or incorrect. So it's it's just what the you, way you do you it. Do that's it. it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, also, like you mentioned, I think that was very uh, important that you mentioned, which I would like to highlight is like, be open enough, no matter what stage of 
your career you're in to mm. be learning from mm. even someone who's fresh mm. or everywhere mm. Mm. have the mindset of in like martial arts we always say like be a white belt mm. don't be a black belt and like have that ego mentality mm. of like i know everything mm. i'm the best blah 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 you have to be a white belt you have to always and you also it, have right? to to practice looking for inspiration mm. because sometimes it can be repetitive mm. you see the same things and if you don't train your eyes to see different things uh definitely traveling will help you to discover different cultures and to discover to discover how people look or express beauty uh in different ways mm. but i mean if you go down walk the street you can walk from here to the supermarket and i ask you what did you see on the road you can't tell me or if i go down and i you ask me i'll tell you i saw this tree and i saw this plant and i saw mm. this graffiti on the wall so you have to keep, we have to look keep yeah. looking around us inspiration is everywhere is everywhere yeah. you just have to give the chance to yourself and train your eye to see inspiration and to try to put it into your piece of art okay. if, if it's makeup or painting or anything so it is it has to start with a with an inspiration and then you practice and you train yourself and then you get to a point where you master the so the, the, skills. The, the the skills of putting it into reality and making it seem alive has travel been a big influence on you it it was it opened up my brain and thinking mm. and acceptance mm. now i understand and accept and i appreciate every single culture every single women and beauty and different type of skin and color and everything so travel makes you wiser in terms of mm. the way you you see beauty and you it breaks your bubble sometimes yeah also. i mean because when you when you're very limited you, you don't have that variety and mm. options in the way you express yourself but when you travel you expose yourself to different environments Mediums, and yeah. yeah so you, if you're yeah. open to it if Again. you're open to it yes yeah. but since you start traveling you have to know that there's good things and there's bad things but in, in traveling but you going back to a little bit on the education system and you mentioned like some of the very good points saying that there should be more emphasis on either colleges or different forms of this but one of the things i really love now is like obviously i run my company so i don't have time to go to college mm-hmm. so i learn everything i want to from online either mm-hmm. youtube or buy a course or something like that and i've seen some good master courses i think there's one from bobby brown mm-hmm. i believe she did the master course which uh, would would you, have you thought about doing something like that no honestly because i work full time with dior mm-hmm. and i have very tough schedule you know i travel on a weekly basis now with corona i'm uh, with the covid-19 um it's different but i'm i used to travel on a weekly basis yeah. i do training i train makeup artists i do pr activities and press activities and also i do retail mm. i have also p, uh, uh, events for customers and so you don't have that. i don't have time yeah. i do also my personal stuff so would that be something you would be interested in like some kind of future it. And yeah, yeah definitely i mean now because i do training i have the chance to share all my knowledge yes. with the, with the trainee yeah. but after when i when things will, will evolve in my career i will definitely have like something to also share all my knowledge and my mm-hmm. expertise in makeup with uh, people that they I think because that will be very interesting especially because you've accumulated a big uh, range of experience with like you mentioned traveling to 14 15 different countries training with all different kinds of people that's that's a lot of knowledge mm. so bringing that out in some form i think would be very beneficial for some people i'm, I'm very 100% sure that people would absolutely love that and i'm i would be excited to see when that happens and i i think it will for sure i think it will happen definitely i mean uh, there is some few plans 
Okay, okay. <laughs> we'll keep we'll keep it to that, and when it comes out, we'll talk more on that when it does come out. Anything else that you want to add in terms of an artist uh, that how someone from a younger generation should look at certain things? It doesn't have to be makeup; it could be something else. Mm. And we've covered a lot of it uh, in a broad perspective already. Like you have to take the chance, mm. you have to set a goal, and then work mm. towards it. All of that. But you want to say something else? I want to say that uh, definitely you have to do what you love mm. i mean if you love doing makeup and this is your passion and you know that this is the place where you're gonna reach the best version of yourself in terms of right. career do it and fight for it and invest in your time learning uh money if you have uh but everything time. practice yeah invest in it and then set that goal focus on it uh, then t- don't let anyone like take you take, off the course. take the way that yes i think that's that's the that's the usually because we have a society which for the longest time i think forever in a lot of ways uh, artists have always been considered in some way, I think much lesser now, but have been considered as an outlaw. Mm. Uh, they were all either considered madmen, uh, that guy's crazy for making a painting, how does he make it like that? Mm. It was not as a normal human being in some way. Like mm. They were someone, that's why Van Gogh and all of these brilliant artists from the history are geniuses in their own way because they did not let the society or anybody else control what they were doing. They, they did whatever they wanted to do. And were there tough periods? I'm sure they had lots mm. of tough periods in their own period as well. I mean, we were we, just discussing oh, earlier I mean, uh, how Van Gogh, when he painted The Starry Night, mm. uh, he was in the uh, mental asylum and uh, he was considered clinically insane. Mm. But that's now a masterpiece. So... The, was it the right thing? Who knows? But he could, he made something amazing out of it. I mean, there is no right or wrong. Exactly. You do what you feel that this is correct mm. and this is expressing the message that you want to give. And mm. that's it. And people are free to take it or leave it. That's amazing. I think on that note, let's uh, leave it here. Thank you so much again for doing this. I know your schedule is very tight always. I appreciate you giving the time. Thank you again. It was was lovely. It was a great conversation. It was a very lovely conversation. We always have amazing conversations. So (laughs) hopefully this is one of the first of many to come. Maybe in the future we'll sit back and talk about something else. But thank you again. Thanks. Alex.